What sound is so strange and frightening? It almost seems beautiful. You can wreck your brain, but no animal can lay claim to this, at least not living animals. For all we know, dinosaurs could have sung, chirped, or even whispered to each other. And no, I'm not talking about the ones from Jurassic Park. There's just one problem though. Fossils aren't exactly famous for making small talk or any sound whatsoever, but they do tell us a lot without actually getting any words out. And with the studies of countless different fossils, we've come closer than ever to finding out what the dinosaurs sounded like. But first, we gotta understand. Well, think about it. Even though making noise can actually be a disadvantage, like when a predator gives away its position, animals still do it. Why? Well, mostly for the same reason we do, communication. Binge-watching Jurassic Park movies has narrowed our perspective of the dinosaurs to the point that they're only seen as roaring predators that only know terror. But in reality, the dinosaurs were also animals like us. And for them, communicating with others of their kind was likely just as important. And just as we and many other animals have a huge range of tones, frequencies, and amplitudes based on the situation we're in, dinosaurs likely did the same. So context matters. This is important because no one sound can be attributed to a single dinosaur. If two birds with very similar body structures can make entirely different sounds, how can we predict the exact sounds a fossil would have made? Unless you've got a time machine tucked away in your basement, there's no way to find out. But we can try our best to recreate the sounds of dinosaurs based on their living descendants and relatives today, that is, birds and crocodiles. There's a group of animals that's well known for being really noisy and having a close connection with non-bird or non-avian dinosaurs. Yep, we're talking about birds who are regarded as the direct descendants of theropods or dinosaurs that walked on two legs. Because of this connection, it's likely that dinosaurs made various sounds as well. But in case you didn't know, birds don't make noise in the same way we do. Unlike mammals, they lack a specific organ called the larynx, which we need to produce certain sounds. And yes, that includes the roars you often hear in the movies. However, just because birds don't sound like us, doesn't mean dinosaurs sounded completely different. And if birds inherited their noise-making abilities from their dinosaur ancestors, we might get a clue about dinosaur sounds by listening to certain birds. Take, for example, the stellar sea eagle. Listen closely and you might find its call strangely familiar, if you're a true dinosaur fan. For those of you who heard nothing but a bird, we'll let you in on the astonishing similarity between this bird sound and the sound of a particular dinosaur. So stay tuned till the end of the video. Now, with the wide range of sounds birds can produce, it's tough to narrow down exactly what dinosaurs might have sounded like. So, scientists are exploring a different idea, closed mouth vocalization. As the name suggests, this means making sounds without opening the mouth. And this is where crocodiles come in. See, crocodiles shared a common ancestor with dinosaurs that lived around 250 million years ago. And coincidentally, closed mouth vocalization is one of their main ways of producing sound. This involves pushing air through the throat while manipulating it to create various sounds like humming, cooing, croaking, and hissing. And if this is how dinosaurs produced sound as well, things could get very scary. I know, cooing and hissing don't exactly send chills down your spine, but wait till you hear the recreation of a T-Rex's sound in the video and you'll see just what I'm talking about. Now, if you've watched a lot of dinosaur movies, I bet you'd have seen them opening their mouths to roar. But if dinosaurs are in fact more like crocodiles, they probably would have made more of a low-pitched, closed-mouth rumble. <laughs> See how frightening a crocodile can be without screaming at the top of its lungs. They rumble so powerfully that you see ripples all around them on the water, kinda like they're shaking the pond, and that could have been what a dinosaur did as well, but with a far greater strength. 
This idea is also well supported because closed mouth vocalization doesn't exactly require the larynx, even though crocodiles do have one. But 99% of the fossils have not shown a single larynx or voice box, meaning this could very well have been their way of producing sound. Again, you'll see in a while why I said 99%, because a very rare discovery has been made recently, but more on that later. For now, let's take a look at what an actual dinosaur might have sounded like, and what better way to start than with everyone's favorite. T-Rex might have haunted you for a few nights the first time you saw Jurassic Park. Well, I've got good news for you. Jurassic Park was very off when it came to recreating T-Rex's sound, especially the constant roaring. You see, actual CT scans of a T-Rex's brain case have revealed that it could hear extremely low frequency sounds. But why is this important? A significant aspect of a dinosaur's communication skills is its ability to listen. By understanding the sounds a dinosaur could hear, we can actually gain insight into its communication methods. Now, this ability to hear low-frequency sounds, combined with the fact that larger animals tend to also produce lower-pitched sounds that travel far, suggests that T-Rexes likely heard and made these low-frequency noises. This means T-Rexes might have used these low-frequency sounds to communicate secretly with other members of their species over long distances, possibly over several miles. So, despite the ear-damaging noises you heard in Jurassic Park, T-Rexes might not have been the roaring rulers of their time. In fact, they might have produced a sound in the closest way to how a crocodile rumbles in a low frequency. And if they did sound like an ultra-low pitched crocodilian, a lot of their sounds would have been hard to hear, but not completely inaudible. Don't get me wrong now, this makes them even more terrifying. See, ear hairs are too small to vibrate as a result of the sound but bigger parts of the body would have vibrated as if multiple earthquakes hit at once. If a human was sent back in time, they might have actually felt the sound in their legs or chest. Plus, because of the sheer size of this beast, the rumbles would have sounded a lot more terrifying, despite not being that loud. You don't have to take my word for it, because you can hear it for yourself. Tell me that did not make your hair stand on end. Enough terrorizing for now though. Let's move on to one of our less scarier sounding dinosaurs. If you've heard the velociraptors in Jurassic Park, the stellar sea eagle sound that I played would have definitely jolted your memory. Yep, this is the dinosaur that could have sounded insanely close to a stellar sea eagle. Both the stellar sea eagle and the velociraptor share similar skull structures including ear canals that resonate in similar frequencies, meaning they both had similar ranges of hearing. This kind of communication would have been beneficial for group hunting, where members could alert each other to the presence of large prey. There's just a tiny problem though. Unlike modern birds that use a syrinx for vocalization, velociraptors didn't have anything like that, so they would have had to produce sounds differently. They likely inflated their esophagus with air and used surrounding muscles to apply pressure in a specific way, causing the air to travel back out of the throat, creating a cackling noise. Don't worry if you didn't catch all of that, because interestingly, this technique's also seen in the Eurasian bittern, a bird often studied by scientists investigating dinosaur communication methods. <coughs> Based on this, we can come up with a rough idea of how velociraptors might have communicated, taking cues from the stellar sea eagle sound range and adding the inhaling audio technique from the Eurasian bittern, velociraptors likely communicated with each other in a similar manner, although they might have slightly adjusted the audio to match their own scale, which would have sounded like this. But unless you can gawk down a velociraptor's throat, there's no way of truly confirming the sound. Don't worry though, because this next dinosaur will definitely make up for it, since we might just have recreated its actually sound-producing apparatus. If you have or haven't seen a Parasaurolophus yet, don't bother, because you'll remember just one thing anyway, the crest. And fortunately, 
This big curved structure coming from the back of its head wasn't just for show. It was an extension of its nasal and premaxillary bones, and recent studies suggest it had a very surprising function. The inside of the crest was quite complex, with winding tubes that resembled a trumpet. So I don't need to quote research to tell you that the most likely explanation for the structure is it was used for producing sounds, used for communication, or establishing dominance within its herd. In a fascinating experiment, scientists scanned the crest of a Parasaurolophus, creating a replica, and did what you normally do with a trumpet. They literally played harmonics through it. And even though we're not entirely sure about the exact mechanics or other vocal elements involved, these sounds give us a glimpse into what these dinosaurs might have sounded like. So close your eyes, put on headphones, and transport yourself to the prehistoric era As you listen to this sound, it's eerily beautiful, isn't it? And I say eerily because the thought of an animal producing sounds from its head just gives me the creeps. So why don't we move on to a dinosaur that made sounds in the most normal way possible, almost close to how humans produce sounds. Remember when I said 99% of dinosaurs lacked a larynx? Well, it seems this strong fella hit the jackpot. A recent and rare discovery involves finding the larynx of a Pinocosaurus, a strongly armored dinosaur. What's fascinating is that this larynx was surprisingly mobile and large, resembling the syrinx in birds. Scientists compared the fossilized larynx parts to those of modern birds and reptiles. They found significant similarities, especially in the size and structure of certain bones. This suggests that Pinocosaurus could have produced various sounds, including deep rumbles, grunts, roars, and perhaps even chirps, which could carry over long distances. However, it's unlikely that a massive 16-foot-long creature like the Pinocosaurus chirped exactly like today's birds. Its size and unique vocal mechanisms would have definitely affected its vocalizations differently. But this could also mean that other dinosaurs, especially their younglings, chirped much like the younglings of many animals. This theory is supported not just by the discovery of a larynx in the Pinacosaurus, but also by the particularly long cochlea discovered in another dinosaur, the Timolengia. The cochlea, which is the sound receiving or hearing apparatus, was way too long for a dinosaur, and the only driving reason for this rapid evolution could be a baby's chirping location call. This means that in order for the dinosaurs to locate their chirping younglings that needed parental care, they had to evolve longer cochlea, which means that the dinosaurs could probably chirp in the first place. So, a Pinacosaurus could most likely chirp, even if it was unlike anything we'd heard before. And the same goes for its normal sounds, which was probably the closest to this. It might not sound as interesting as the Parasaurolophus or as terrifying as the T-Rex, but it's just as important. It's pretty mind-boggling to imagine a massive 4,400-pound animal making chirping noises, but it's definitely more intriguing than what was previously believed. Still, one thing's for sure. Hollywood absolutely butchered dinosaur sounds, except for maybe this next one. Ah, the dinosaur that looked just as friendly as a giraffe, despite being double its size, and while it would have been a marvel to look at, you should know that the size of a creature can greatly influence the sound it produces. As animals get larger, so do their internal organs, including the lungs. This is very crucial in determining the sounds an animal can make. For the Brachiosaurus, pumping oxygen up its 40-foot neck to its head and brain would have been quite a challenge, to say the least it would have required an incredibly efficient breathing system to function properly. Simply dropping its head all of a sudden could have caused a drastic change in blood pressure that could even knock it out cold. However, research suggests that the Brachiosaurus had a highly efficient breathing system, very similar to birds. So you can kick that image of a Brachiosaurus falling and causing the earth to split in half. Now, unlike mammals, they likely had multiple openings for airflow allowing constant exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. 
Plus, they could have possessed a series of air sacs positioned in front and behind the lungs. These air sacs probably acted like pumps, ensuring a continuous flow of air through the lungs. This system helped maintain proper respiration, which in turn would have played a crucial role in their communication abilities, since dinosaurs, or at least this one, lacked vocal cords. So their main way of producing sounds would probably have involved pushing air out from the secondary air sac through the throat. This process would have generated a deep, low-pitched bellowing noise. This idea is also supported by the fact that Brachiosaurus air canals are well suited for emitting low-frequency tones. Plus, their skulls had resonance chambers that could bounce sound waves around, resulting in a range of pitches and tones. And, depending on how they use their esophagus and jawbone, they might have been capable of producing not only low bellows, but also bird-like songs, similar to modern birds. This suggests that the iconic singing heard in Jurassic Park might have been true to some extent after all. By combining insights from various animals with similar traits, researchers have hypothesized that the Brachiosaurus might have sounded like this. Granted, Jurassic Park might have exaggerated a bit by calling it singing, but if there's ever a dinosaur that could perform on stage, it's this one. One thing's for sure, dinosaurs will never stop intriguing us. Despite vanishing off the face of the earth for millions of years now, they still force us to dig deeper into their lives. And who knows, maybe one day we'll get to see a recreation of the entire Parasaurolophus instead of just its crest. And that's a wrap. If you had to choose one dinosaur to hear for yourself, which of these would it be? The T-Rex's rumble, or the Brachiosaurus's songs, or maybe one we didn't mention? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.